sister recipes. So I'm just standing around this side of the kitchen bench, just making sure it's all going live. Looks like it's all working well. So I'm gonna get back there and start cooking for you. And I've just realized <laughs> my ears aren't in, so I'm gonna put them in. Let's just check this audio is still working. Okay. Now, can you just let me know if you can hear my audio okay? So uh, just give me a thumbs up or, uh, yep, I can hear you if you're tuning in. So hopefully that's all working now. And I always keep my iPad here when I'm doing my Facebook Lives, just in case for some reason I can't see your comments there, but I can get them here. So let's just make sure I've got my live up on the screen. The joys of live broadcasting, guys. <laughs> so tell me where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know where you're watching me from today. So pop a comment in, tell me what city or country you're tuning in from and what you're going to be doing this Easter um, with our very quiet Easter plans. I'd love to know more. So today I'm going to show you how to make my low FODMAP hot cross bun recipe. It's super easy. Uh, there's a few ingredients, but please don't be daunted by them. Uh, and it's really delicious. It doesn't contain any dried fruit, so it's great when we're avoiding fruit, like so many of us are on a SIBO diet. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, um, it's low-carb, low-sugar, uh, but not low in taste. It's absolutely delicious. So I'll just check that uh, if anyone's put a comment in. Not yet. All right, guys. Well, I'm assuming you can hear me. Um, hopefully it is all working fine. So let's get cooking. So to start off, we're going to mix through our um, dry ingredients and then I'll pour in some wet ingredients. So to start off, we're going to use some almond meal and I'm going to add in two cups of almond meal. Now, if you've got any questions about my recipes as I'm cooking today, uh, please just add them in the comments and then I will come and answer them at the end of the class. Doesn't want to fit in there. All right, so two cups of almond meal. One and two, there we go. Uh, and then I've got a whole heap of spices. Now these spices are what make the hot cross buns so delicious. Uh, so I've got a few here, so let me talk you through them. Uh, and I'm just checking my notes so I make sure I get all the quantities right. So I've got three teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of ground nutmeg, one teaspoon of ground ginger, and half a teaspoon of cloves. We've then got um, about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm using a pink Himalayan salt. And then I have got uh, one teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda or bicarbonate of soda, as we call it here in Australia. So we want to throw all of that in. And then we're just going to give it a nice good mix so that it just blends all of our dry ingredients together. Okay. And then to this, it's super easy. You'll see it's literally put together in no time at all. I've got four free range organic eggs. I always choose the best quality eggs I can afford. Um, it means the chickens have had a better life and the eggs taste so much better. So here are my four um, just quickly beaten eggs. So I'll pour that in. And then I've also got one quite unripe banana that I've mashed. Now, if you can't tolerate banana, um, that's fine. You can use something else. So if you uh, can tolerate some cooked pumpkin, that could work as well. You want something that's going to add a little bit of extra moisture to your dish. And then we've got, again, these wonderful kind of aromatics that are so common in a hot cross bun. So I've got the grated rind or zest of one orange and one lemon. So in they go. 
Oh, it smells so lovely. It smells almost like Christmas or oh, Easter. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I've got one quarter of a cup of coconut oil. Now, as you can see, my coconut oil is pretty firm because it is quite cold here today in Melbourne. Um, now, it will mix through, but you can, by all means, you can um, warm that up in the microwave or on the stove top. Okay, then we just want to add a little bit of um, sweetener and one more flavouring. So I've got here a vanilla extract. Now I can tolerate this extract. It's got a little bit of um, alcohol in it, which keeps it stable. Uh, but if you can't tolerate that, by all means, you can use the scraped seeds from a full vanilla pod. And then there's nothing else in it. So that's great if your tummy's feeling really sensitive. So we're going to put one teaspoon of that in. And then just for a tiny pop of sweetness, I'm going to use some maple syrup. Now again, you can use any sweetener that you can tolerate. I am looking for something that's liquid though because it adds to the liquid element of the recipe. Um, now it's a low FODMAP dish so you wouldn't use honey if you are strictly low FODMAP. But if you're just following a SIBO diet and you can tolerate a little bit of honey, by all means you can use that. So we're going to put in two tablespoons of maple syrup. Just shy. <laughs> oh, well. That will still be quite sweet. There we go. Okay. And then we're just going to mix this all together. So as you can see, guys, it takes like a couple of minutes just to throw together. It's so easy. Okay. So a bit of elbow grease. Mix it all together so it combines. You could do this in a blender or a food processor if you want to. It doesn't need to mix for long. It's just as long as it um, all comes together nicely. And for me, I'm just making sure that all that coconut oil has blended through because I don't want to have big, giant lumps of coconut in my hot cross buns. So here we go. So, oh, it smells divine. The next step is we want to put this in our um, muffin tray. Because it is a very wet mixture, it's not like a dough um, hot cross bun recipe. So we do need to put it into a muffin tin. Now I have lined my muffin tin with little muffin cases, paper muffin cases. Or if you don't want to do that, by all means, just grease your muffin tray with um, coconut oil or butter or ghee, whatever you can tolerate. Now, my oven is preheated to 180 degrees centigrade, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're about to put these in to bake. So let's clean that off. Now, as you can see, it takes about one spoonful and a bit per case. So We'll just put that in. Now I'm going to put these in the oven for about 10 minutes to cook. Then we're going to pull them out and we're going to add the cross, that telltale hot cross bun cross. And I'll show you how to make that up in just a moment. All right. So you should be able to get 12 hot cross buns out of this recipe. Now these are delicious, served warm, straight out of the oven um, and with a little bit of butter spread on them, if you can tolerate butter. I'm a little bit addicted to butter, so I always love a little bit of butter. Um, it's also really nice with ghee, if you can't tolerate full butter but you can tolerate ghee, that works well. But it's just as good on its own without anything spread, if you can't tolerate anything like that or if you're wanting to keep your diet completely dairy-free. Okay. Now I've got a little spatula here just to make sure we don't miss any of this hot cross bun goodness. I'll just put the last in our tray. All right, and there we have hot cross buns. 
So like I said, they will go into the oven for about 10 minutes now. So at 180 degrees centigrade, 350 Fahrenheit. Okay, let's see if anyone's got any questions. So don't forget guys that if you've got any questions as I'm cooking, please add them in the comments and then I'll be able to answer them as we go along. So to make our cross, that all important cross on the hot cross bun is really easy when you're following a low FODMAP diet. So I have got, uh, what have I got here? Three tablespoons of almond flour and two tablespoons of corn flour. And then I'm just going to add a little bit at a time, so I don't have my spoon ready to go, a little bit of water until it comes together. Now you don't need to add much and what you're looking for is a paste but something that's not too runny. So add a little bit, stir, add a little bit, stir. Okay. That's slowly coming together. Now I need to put a timer on my oven as well so otherwise I'll get completely distracted and busy talking to you guys and forget all about my hot cross buns. That would be a disaster. We don't want that. Okay. So it needs to be pliable so that we can put this over the top of our hot cross buns in a paste. I'll show you how we'll pipe that over. So it's kind of like that. If you can see, there's a bit of wetness to it, but it's still holding some kind of shape. Now the easiest way to pipe your cross on your hot cross buns is grab a sandwich bag like this. We're going to put our mixture inside of it. And then when it comes time to piping, we're just going to snip off the corner. Now if you have a piping bag, please use that obviously. Uh, that means there's no waste. But if you don't have a piping bag, this is a really great alternative. It's going to add a tiny bit more water. And it does stiffen up a little bit after you've added water to it. The um, flowers kind of absorb the water. So there we go. Okay, and just make sure that everything is well combined in that mix. You don't want any lumps of flour when you're piping out your hot cross bun cross. Okay, so open your bag up. That will stay. We're just going to pour that in. Now one of the things we have to come to terms with as SIBO folk is that life does change when you have a gut condition like SIBO. So we have to get creative with the ways that we approach our food. Um, so a traditional hot cross bun isn't on the cards for us because a traditional hot cross bun contains wheat, uh, it contains dried fruit and a lot of sugar and that can be really troublesome for your tummy when you've got SIBO. So this is a great alternative. Look, it's not exactly the same as a hot cross bun but it's got all of those lovely spices and aromatic flavours. It's just missing the fruit. Now, you might be able to tolerate a little bit of dried fruit every now and then, and if that's the case, go and find a really good quality dried fruit that does not contain any sulfites. The sulfites can be really problematic on your tummy. Um, and just have a little bit uh, and see how you go with it. So you know, my, all my recipes are designed to be able to be modified to your dietary requirements. And if you've got any questions about what your, how you could modify this for you, please pop that in the questions for me. So here we have our little bag of our um, cross mixture ready to be piped at the 10 minute mark of our hot cross buns cooking. I can smell them and they smell amazing. <laughs> okay, now, while we're waiting for the hot crust buns to cook, I've got a special chocolate truffle recipe to share with you. So we might be worried that chocolate's off the cards, but it doesn't have to be when you have SIBO. 
do check your body's reactions with raw cacao. Um, I personally have always been able to do really well with it. Uh, right from the start of my SIBO treatment, I started making my own SIBO-friendly chocolate, uh, and it was such a saviour to be able to still have a little bit of something sweet. When you are using something like raw cacao, you don't need a lot because it's a very strong flavour. Um, it hasn't been um, kind of weakened down by lots of other things that are added to it, like so much of the commercial chocolate that's available has had happened to it. So you only need one or two bites and, and it's really satisfying. For me as well, it is almost, um, it's a very much a stimulant. So I have to be careful when I eat it. I don't uh, eat my cacao in the night time. I've learned this the hard way when I was creating my first cookbook, the SIBO Summer Cookbook, and I was testing a um, chocolate mousse recipe and my mum and I ate it at about 10 p.m. and at 3 a.m. we were still really wide awake. I was staying with them at the time and uh, we were both wandering the house going, oh, I'm so awake. So just be mindful that you might also have a similar reaction to me. So I'm going to show you, again, this can be put together with whatever ingredients you've got in your pantry. So I've got my raw cacao. I buy it in bulk. I use it quite frequently. So for me, it makes sense to buy a big packet of it. And then I've got a series of uh, nut butters and the sweeteners that I want to talk you through about what you could use. Okay. So the foundation for our um, uh, chocolate truffle, <laughs> I just had a complete brain freeze then, uh, is we're going to mix some nut butters, uh, a little bit of sweetener, and some desiccated coconut, which I've just realized is sitting on my table over there, so I won't have to run and get that, but that's okay, because I can use this time to check any questions. And then we use some raw cacao, and I've also got a little bit of um, fresh almond milk that I'll use just to mix it together. Uh, so what we want to do is mix all of this, it turns it into a reasonably wet paste, but solid enough that we can roll it in a ball in our hands and then we're going to dust it off in some extra cacao or you could dust it off on with some extra desiccated coconut or anything like that. So really the choice is yours on what you use with it. But let me just go and get the, that cacao and I'll check your questions at the same time. Super close up. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just see if there's anything coming through. So how are you finding the class so far, guys? I'd, I'd really love to do a couple of different um, free Facebook Live cooking classes for you while we're all dealing with home isolation. Um, so pop in the comments what you would like me to cook for you. Um, you know, are there any particular um, recipes that you're struggling with or that you would like some support with? Let me know. Let me know what you would like me to cook um, and I'll be happy to share that with you. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to use half a cup of desiccated coconut. So just put that in my bowl. Now, if you can't tolerate desiccated coconut, then you could use almond meal, for instance. That would be absolutely fine as a substitution. So here we go for our um, chocolate truffle recipes. So half a cup of desiccated coconut. We're going to add in some raw cacao powder. Now I'm going to put in another half a cup of that. And I just put my measuring cup in the bowl because if any spills out, it's fine. It just goes in the bowl where it needs to go. Okay, so half a cup of raw cacao powder. So 
so we've got a nice mix there. You can just mix that together just so that combines the dry ingredients. Mm, 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 mm. smells delicious. Okay, now we're going to add four tablespoons of um, one nut butter. Now, I've purposely got a whole different bunch of nut butters on my table here to show you. So you could use an almond butter, you could use a good quality peanut butter if you can tolerate that. And um, I've got a macadamia butter and I'm actually going to use both. I'm going to use almond butter and macadamia butter because I just love the flavours of them. Oops. You could also use a seed butter. I've got tahini here, you could use a sesame seed butter. So really whatever you can tolerate, pop it in here. Okay, now quite commonly our nut butters have quite a lot of oil sitting on the top. That is absolutely fine. It's delicious, we want it. But just stir your nut butter together before you scoop it out because we want nut and oil, not just oil. Okay. Yum, yum, yum. So we're going to put in four of the macadamia. One, two, three, four. Scrape that out. Yummy, yummy. And then I'm going to do four of my almond butter. If you're only going to use one nut butter, and that's fine, you don't have to use two, just use eight tablespoons. So that's one. Uh, and this one has been roasted, so it's a lovely dark colour. One, two, there's the timer. Three. And four. All right, now we need to get that cross on. So let's put this to the side for a moment. I'll just quickly clean up these jars so that I've got some space to put our tray down. Okay, don't need these. And before I move this one away, I'll just show you guys this. This is the Elmo Almond Cream. I use it to make my own fresh almond milk. It's fantastic. It makes five litres um, of almond milk out of one jar. It saves a lot of um, packaging and uh, tastes delicious. But you can also use it in desserts like this. So it's a really great option. Okay. Let's move that bowl for the moment. And we'll get our tray out. Mm, mm, mm. Yummy, yummy. Oh, that smells so good. So, we want to get our, what else is this? our bag with our mixture already pre-made. We're going to snip just the tiniest little section off the top of this. And my rule with snipping off corners is you can always snip off more, but you can't snip off less. So start small and then go from there. So it's going to come out quite quickly. So make sure you've got it tied, twisted tightly at the bottom. And then we're going to start putting on crosses. And we're just going to do this for all of them. So go, I personally find it better to just do one direction first, and then I come back and do the other direction. And make sure you go all the way from the left to the right, so you get the full width of your hot cross bun. The white cross does contract as it cooks, so be generous with your stripe. Okay, so there's one way. Now we'll quickly go the other way. Eek. All right. 
And we don't want to have these out of the oven for too long because they are still cooking. So speed is important here. Okay, last row with our crosses. Now I'm doing this very quickly because I want to get this back in the oven and I'm conscious I'm doing a live class, but you can spend a little bit more time trying to be perfect with your cross, um, but I don't have that time. So into the oven it goes again. And we're going to bake this for another five to 10 minutes. We'll just judge on how the buns are looking. Okay, now I can see there's a couple of questions that have come through. I'll just come and have a look at the screen. Hi, Christine. Um, thanks for saying you'd love to see me do a pecan pie. Okay, let's do a pecan pie. That has to be one of my all-time favourite desserts. Like, it's so, so good. <laughs> Um, and Teresa, hi Teresa. Um, it looks, it all looks so lovely. You've inspired me to make them today. Thank you. Oh yay! Yay Teresa! I'm glad I've inspired you to make them. They're so good. We don't have to miss out. I love hot cross buns, and I just hate missing out on good food just because we've got SIBO. So let's not do that. Let's find a way around it. Okay, so we've got back to our um, chocolate truffles while that finishes cooking. So we've got our um, shredded or desiccated, finely shredded or desiccated coconut. Go for a sugar-free, sulfite-free version. We've got half a cup of um, raw cacao powder uh, and half a cup of the shredded coconut. Then we've got four tablespoons of almond butter and four tablespoons of macadamia butter. Now we want to add something that is sweet to this. Uh, now I can tolerate honey and a lot of people with SIBO can, so don't be scared of honey. But what I would say to you is go and find the best quality honey that you can. Now we've got this lovely brand here in Melbourne uh, and what I particularly like about them is that on their jars it tells you the strength um, and the sweetness of the honey. So this one, you can see it's really dark and rich looking. It's got a quite a strong honey flavor and it's got a very sweet um, sense to it. Whereas my blue gum, this is a eucalyptus um, a mountain tea tree with summer eucalypts. It's really lovely. You can smell it in the honey too. Um, this one is a blue gum honey. The strength is only two out of five and the sweetness is only two out of five. Now it's honey, it's still sweet, but it's not that kind of sickly sweet. Um, so we're going to add a little bit of this to it and I'm going to just add in um, one to two tablespoons. So I start with one tablespoon, one spoonful, start mixing my mixture together and then if I need something more to kind of keep binding this, um, then I will add that in. Okay. And then the final thing that we want to add in is a little bit of our almond milk. Now, again, start with less and, and you can always add more, but you can't take away. So I'll just put a, a little drizzle in to start with and I'll just start mixing this. Now, the consistency that we are looking for with our chocolate truffle balls is firm and malleable, not runny. Because remember, guys, we need to actually roll these into little truffle balls and if it's too wet and soggy we won't be able to do it now if you're asked i can hear you thinking but what if i've made it too wet and runny what do i do well it's easy you can add some more coconut to it you can add some more cacao powder to it so you can just keep kind of working it through now a hot day versus a cold day will change how much everything comes together uh, if I can lift this up and without tipping it out, <laughs> without tipping it out, she says. Um, you can see there's still a, quite a bit of cocoa powder around the edge of the bowl. It's quite stiff, so just a fraction of my almond milk. 
Now the little goes a really long way. So we're just going to mix that through until we've been able to get everything off the side of the bowl. Oh, I can't wait till we have smell TV, guys. I mean, how much fun will my cooking classes be then when you can smell what I can smell right now? My kitchen smells amazing. <laughs> Chocolate and hot cross buns. Like, is there anything better? Okay. Now, my mixture is now a nice ball. The cacao has come off the sides. It's holding its shape, which means it's going to be able to be rolled and hold its shape in our cacao dish. So I'll just clear some space so I'm not knocking more things over. Here's the hot press buns. Okay. Let's give everything a quick wipe down. Made a bit of a mess. I'll just clean out my towel because I'm about to put my tray on it. I'll show you the tray before I let it go and cool down for a moment. Okay. Ta-da! Look at our hot cross buns, guys! Okay, now you can use a skewer to see if this comes out clean. I'm just touching that and I can feel that that feels firm and solid. Um, Ta-da! <laughs> I love hot cross buns so much. So let these cool down. I mean, they're piping hot right now, so we need to let them cool before we take a bite. Let them cool down. Now, they're delicious served warm, um, but if you uh, can't wait, then just let them cool a little bit. <laughs> that will burn your mouth. Um, or you can keep them, you serve them cold and put some butter on it, which is lovely. Um, with anything that is baked without kind of gluten and all the rest, and when, we, when we're using almond flours and alternative cooking methods, it is best on the day that it's baked. But these freeze exceptionally well. So you can pop them in a container, in an um, airtight container in the freezer once they're cooled completely. And then you can just reheat them when you want to have a nice hot cross bun with a cup of tea. Um, you can either just pop them in the microwave for about 30 seconds to a minute to warm them up, or you can pop one back in the oven for a few minutes to warm through. So they look great, don't they? Tell me what you think, guys. Are you ready to go and make these yourselves? Okay. Now for the final stage of our yummy chocolate truffles. So I've got a tray that I've lined with some um, greaseproof paper. Need that box back to again. And we're going to take little balls of truffle mixture and then roll it into some extra raw cacao powder. And that will give it a lovely coating. This is a great recipe if you've got kids, they really love getting their hands dirty and playing with this mixture. So I need to try and put this so you can see it. This is the downside of living in a very small apartment in inner city Melbourne. <laughs> I don't have a big kitchen, but I make do with what I what I have. So as you saw then, I just took a, a teaspoon. Now you can totally do this with your hands, but I'm just trying to keep my hands a little bit clean given that I'm filming and need to touch things. So you take one teaspoon to scoop it, another teaspoon to flatten it, pop it in the mixture. I do a couple at a time. And then you, once we've got a few in there, you can just roll it. Now you could shape these, you could do a quenelle with them if you've got those kind of skills in the kitchen. But you are looking for about a teaspoon worth of mixture 
per little truffle. Any bigger than that, and it does, I mean, they're very rich, so you don't need a lot. Um, and you just want these to be like a little bite-sized treat rather than a huge mouthful. Okay. So you just roll that in the cacao powder and then pop it on the tray and then ultimately we're going to pop these in the fridge just to firm up for a little while. I keep my um, chocolate truffles in the fridge in an airtight container. Um, they keep for quite a few days if they last that long uh, and they're really nice to serve with a cup of tea or if you're not too bothered by the um, stimulating effects of raw cacao uh, they are also really great as an after dinner treat. I've also packed these up with a, in a little box um, and given them as gifts and no one knows that they're a SIBO friendly treat and this is what I love about cooking. Um, we don't have to feel like we are restricted if we get creative in the kitchen. And that's why I've been building all those recipes for you guys. Um, I've got hundreds of freely available recipes on my website. I've also got four SIBO cookbooks, which you can use my SIBO summer cookbook, the SIBO family favourites cookbook, which is full of, as it he says, as you can imagine, family favourite dishes. Um, my SIBO holiday cookbook, which is perfect for this time of year. Um, even though we're not gathering with our families, we can still enjoy good food, so it's kind of holiday type food. And then my very latest cookbook, which is the SIBO soups cookbook. And just because you have tuned in live, I'm going to give you a special discount code at the end of today's class, which will give you 20% off your order with your SIBO soups cookbook. And that comes in the Australian edition, an American edition, and a UK slash European edition. So it's covering all bases, all ways that we call our foods, because we don't call them the same names. And it means that there's also the metric version and an imperial version. So however you are used to cooking, I've got you covered with a SIBO soup cookbook. So there you have it, guys my chocolate truffles and my hot cross buns. Let's bring the hot cross buns back over. Easter does not need to be boring when you can eat beautiful hot cross buns like this and delicious chocolate truffles like this. Mm -hmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Oh, so good. Well, that's it for today's class, guys. I'm going to come around the screen and um, just check up your questions. If you've got any final questions that you would like to ask me, please pop them in the comments now so that I can read them and answer them. Um, but if you're watching this video after the live video has gone to air, I'll still be checking comments, so please feel free to pop any questions in the comment box for me. Now for my close-up. <laughs> All right. Um, so, hi, um, Penny. Thanks for saying that they look delicious. They are. I wish you were here to be able to help me eat them. <laughs> hi, Helen. And Helen says they look great. Thanks, Helen. And Christine looks yummy. Yep. Mm. I've got a mouthful of chocolate truffle. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, I'll add the coupon code for the 20% discount on the SIBO, um, on the SIBO Soups e-cookbook um, uh, once I finish the live airing of today's class. And don't forget to tell me what you'd like to see me make for you in future Healthy Gut live cooking classes on Facebook. It was great bringing today's class to you. Have a wonderful Easter in our home isolation and I hope you get to enjoy some of my delicious SIBO-friendly recipes this year. See you soon, guys.